Hello everyone and thank you for listening to this presentation. My name is Alejandro Parada Mayorga and this talk is about graphon pooling in graph neural networks. This work is done in collaboration with Luana Ruiz and Professor Alejandro Ribeiro. We are all with the Department of Electrical and Systems Engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. Many modern machine learning problems deal with network data. To name a few, Think of tracking the spread of information on social networks or of trying to identify the source of a text based on its word content and on semantic word networks. To solve this problem, it is essential that the learning architecture take the graph structure into account. In this context, graph neural networks arise as the counterpart of convolutional neural networks for network problems motivated by the remarkable performance that CNNs have achieved on regular domains and, in particular, on image processing applications. In practice, GNNs work well because they are permutation equivariant and stable. These important properties aid learning because it allows GNNs to exploit internal symmetries of the signal and of the underlying graph during the training phase of the neural network. Graph neural networks are layer structures, where in each layer signals and information is processed or filtered as graph signals. The information is mapped between layers by means of a map sigma which performs the operations of nonlinearity and pooling. The output of a GNN is a function of the coefficients h sub k of the filters used in each layer, which in total can be represented by a tensor capital H. And the output is also a function on the shift operators S sub i associated to each layer of the GNN. It is worth pointing out that GNNs can be considered as a variation of graph filters where a nonlinearity function sigma is added. The function sigma can be expressed as a composition of an operator P which performs the operation of pulling and an operator eta, which acts as a pointwise nonlinearity. Eta increases or improves the frequency selectivity, which can be limited for graph filters when they are selected to be stable, while the operator P performs dimensionality reduction that can be done in two basic ways. On one hand, P maps information from one layer to the other without changing the size of the vectors representing the signals or changing the graphs, but instead zeroing some components of the vectors in each layer. This is called zero padding. Alternatively, P can perform sampling to reduce the size of the vectors and graph coarsening to reduce the size of the graphs accordingly. Both Zero padding and graphon coarsening have shown comparable performance in diverse scenarios, but they also exhibit some limitations. In particular, to use zero padding, we require a selection of the nodes in the graph where we intend to keep the information different from zero. This requires the application of optimal sampling techniques, which in general have a high computational cost. And when graph coarsening is used, a distortion of the structural properties of the original graph can be produced, which leads to a loss in performance. But most importantly, both approaches are not applicable when the graphs considered are large. They are limited by their computational cost. And this is even more critical when the graph considered are dense, which means the number of edges is large. However, Graphons and graphon signal processing are naturally adapted to these scenarios where large and then graphs are involved. Graphons are bounded symmetric measurable functions whose support is on the unit squared and whose values lie on the unit interval 0, 1. They can be considered as the analog of an adjacency matrix of a graph with an uncountable number of nodes and an uncountable number of edges. Graphons can be used also to generate graphs. For instance, performing sampling and integration on a regular or irregular grid on the unit square, an adjacency matrix can be generated. But graphons can be also induced or be generated from a graph. 
This can be done using piecewise constant functions whose amplitudes are defined by the entries of the adjacency matrix of the graph. Graphons are used as the limit objects of sequences of graphs whose number of nodes and edges grows up to infinity. This is, there are sequences of graphs that converge to a graphon. And this notion of convergence is rooted in convergence of densities of homomorphisms between graphs that has as a consequence that the spectral decompositions and filtering on the graphs of the sequence are equivalent to the spectral decompositions and filtering on the graphons induced by those graphs and on the graphon limit. The notion of graph signal can then be associated to that one of graphon signals, which are simply square integrable functions on the unit interval. In particular, we recall that any graph signal induces a graphon signal. This is, the graph induces a graphon and the graph signal induces a piecewise constant function whose support is on the interval 0, 1 while graph signals can be also obtained from graphon signals, for instance, by using sampling. The graphon induces a shift operator that maps a square integrable function x on L2 of 0, 1 into y, again in the space L2, 0, 1, by means of an integral operator defined as the integral in the interval 0, 1 of the product between the graphon function w and the signal x. And using the spectral theorem, we can write the action of the graphon shift operator on the signal x as a sum expression in terms of its eigenvalues lambda sub j and its eigenvectors phi sub j. The coefficients of this expansion, calculated as the integral between the signal x and the agent function phi sub j, are called the Graphon Fourier coefficients or Graphon Fourier transform of x and are referred to as x hat sub j. Each coefficient is associated with an eigenvalue. When only the coefficients associated to the largest engine values are different from zero, we say that the given signal x is van limited. As expected, graph signals and graphon signals are also related in the spectral domain. In particular, if we consider the graph Fourier transform of sequences of graph signals that converge to a given graphon signal, we can show that they converge to the graphon Fourier transform of the limit. And this notion of convergence extends also when considering filters on the spectral domain. This is, if a sequence of graph signals is filtered by a filter h of lambda defined on the general spectral axis, their limit converges to the filter version of the graphon limit signal. We now introduce graphon pooling to consider GNNs where the first layer is defined by graphs where both the number of nodes and the number of edges is large. The central notion consists on exploiting the spectral consistency inherited from sequences of graphs that converge to a graphon. To do so, we use a graphon W and build, by sampling or integration, a sequence of graphs that converge to W. Then, the graphs in the layers of the GNN are obtained as a subsequence of these graphs. For our discussion, we consider integration on nested regular grids as the method to generate the graphs from a given graphon. In this way, the value of a signal on a given subdomain of a coarser grid is associated to the values of the signal from a previous layer on the subdomains that intersect the current domain. For instance, considering the illustration depicted, the value of a signal on the subdomain omega tilde is calculated as the weighted average of a signal defined on a finer grid considering subdomains that intersect with omega tilde. Therefore, there is no ambiguity when mapping the signals between layers on the GNN. We test our proposed pooling strategy on two numerical experiments. The first is source localization, where the goal is to identify the sources of a graph diffusion process with 10 sources given the equation on the slide. 
In this equation, S is the graph, which is sampled from a polynomial graphon. We consider three different scenarios where the graph S has 100, 200, and 400 nodes. The input signals are the signal X sub 0. The i component of x sub 0 is equal to 1 if i is a source and 0 otherwise. As for the output signals, they are the diffuse samples x sub t. Each output sample is taken at an arbitrary time t. In this experiment, our objective is to compare the ability of two-layer GNNs with three different pooling strategies, graphon pooling, graphon coarsening, and selection pooling, to solve the source localization problem. We do this by comparing the classification accuracies achieved by each of these architectures on the test set. From the table on the slide, we conclude that graphon pooling does not improve upon the other pooling strategies when the dimensionality reduction ratio of the first layer, n, divided by n sub 1 is small. On the other hand, it largely outperforms the other methods when this ratio is large, indicating that graphon pooling is well suited for GNNs where the size n sub l of each layer l needs to be bounded due to time or memory constraints. Our second experiment is movie recommendation. In this problem, given a movie M, the goal is to predict the rating by user U given other user ratings to the same movie and, and a user similarity network. To simulate this problem, we use the Mobile Lens 100K dataset, which consists of 100,000 ratings between 1 and 5 given by 943 users to 1,682 movies. Each node of the graph S is a user, and each edge weight S sub IJ is a pairwise correlation between the rating vectors of users Y and J. As for the data, for each movie M, the input data are the existing ratings to the movie M group in the rating vector X sub M. If a rating doesn't exist, the corresponding vector entry is set to zero. The output data Y sub M is a scalar corresponding to the rating given by user 1. Using this data, we train GNNs with all pooling strategies to predict the user's 1's rating by optimizing the cross-entropy loss. The plots on the slide show the average training and validation losses achieved for 10 realization of the training test split. We conclude that graphon pooling outperforms both graph coarsening and selection pooling. Unlike graph coarsening, it does not overfit the data, which is indicated by the training loss being smaller than the validation loss, and it has much smaller variance than selection pooling across realizations. We now conclude our talk highlighting how graphons and graphon signal processing can be used to perform pooling in graph neural networks, building the graph layers from an underlying graphon. As a consequence of the fact that elements in the graph layers built from the graphon are a subsequence of a convergent sequence, we have a spectral consistency through layers, which implies consistent filtering. In this context, we do have a natural way to associate the components of the signal when they are mapped between layers. We observe in our experiments that graphon pooling outperforms other approaches when there is a significant change in the size of the graphs between layers. We remark that in future works, graphons can also be used to handle uncertainty in graph layers, assuming that the graphs in the layers are realizations of a random model based on a graph. If you have questions or feedback, please feel free to send us an email. Thank you very much for watching.